G'day guys, John Walter here from Racing Watch. It's that time of year again for the Melbourne Cup preview. 20, what year is it? I'm not even joking, 2022. Uh, I'm going to really try and push through this as quick as I can. I might just go through some quick lead up races. Caulfield Cup, the main one. Probably the only one I'll actually go through in, in detail because otherwise uh, we'll be here forever. I think it's the main lead up race that we really need to concentrate on. And I'll uh, do that. I'll go through each runner very quickly. Uh, try and give an outline of whether I think it's sort of a trifecta chance, first four chance, whether it's uh, worth risking for any reason or whether I, I like the horse, um, you know, pretty strongly. So I'll do that quickly. International certainly touch on them as best as I can. They are a little bit weird this year. There's only four of them, though, so that's a good thing. And I'll try and push through, give my uh, thoughts, as I said, along the way. Uh, yeah, I think the best way to start is, is definitely dissecting that um, Caulfield Cup because I do... Oh, my strong belief is that it is the lead up race of most importance here, probably away from the internationals. So definitely going to start here. Um, in this race, we have got Gold Trip, Dewey, Knight's Order, Montefilia, Numerian, Vow and Declare, Smoke and Romans, Charlie Rose. Interesting things I sort of want to talk about. I'll, I'll sort of run it to halfway and it can sort of find its way to the, the most important part. But really slowly run race here and a number of the lead up races this year have been slowly run and i think that's an important point because you've really got to sort of try and use your eye to to work out which horses are being suited which haven't and and the horses that you know are going to push through and, and run further and and ones that may struggle now that they're coming out of slow tempo races like for argument's sake the caulfield cup turnbull george main all run at slow tempos um this year and uh yeah then we're going to try and work out who who's suited as we we're sort of saying so very difficult to see here but we've got Jua pushing to the outside at the moment so this is Jua out the back we'll start from the back Montefilia inside it we've got uh, Smoke and Romans is in the white cap here hard to see New Mirian Knight's Order led we've got Val and Declare who's had a very nice run just off the speed there who else are we missing Charlie Rose is in the green and is that it? Smoking over there in your mirror in every chance. Yeah, so that's it. So on Gold Trip, pardon me, in the Australian Bloodstock Colours, who you know, had a whitish run. So as we sort of come to the bend, they've all had pretty much every chance with the horses out the back, certainly disappointed by the tempo. Montefilia does get held up a touch here, as you can see, turn sideways. Once it gets to the outside, attacks the line. Definitely, uh, you know, arguably the best run in the race, uh, especially the way it finishes off. And you can see why it's been well backed. Uh, watch the two down the outside most importantly first so we've got Jua and and uh, Montefilia coming down the outside both finishing the race off well against the slow tempo you've got uh, Smoke and Romans who's run up the back of them here I don't think it's suited by a slow tempo either so it sort of runs up the back of them gets forced back to the inside and has to pick up its momentum again I don't think Knight's Order was completely suited by the slow tempo either having to try and get off the inside too wasn't easy on this day think of the ones that are in the race on Saturday or Tuesday, sorry, that are most suited by what happened here. I think Gold Trip certainly has the turn of foot, not proven over further as yet. Dropped back in distance and ran well in the Cox Plate. I'll have a look at it uh, later. Uh, I think Vow and Declare, it's, it sounds weird. I, I, I'm a big distance query on this horse. Very run, slow, uh, very slow run Melbourne Cup at one. And I, I think that it was suited by the conditions here. I think the ones that can improve off it are, are certainly Knight's Order, Smoke and Romans, and Montefilia and Jouet, and I, you know, this is a, I don't want to give you the, the heads up too early, but I think they're the four horses that are the hardest to beat in the Melbourne Cup this year, and and we'll talk about the internationals as well. But I think it's the key lead up, and as I said, the slow tempo is is also a, a big key to that race, and I'll, I'll no doubt talk about it, you know, over and over again a few times as 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 we go through this. So uh, the first horse we'll talk about is Gold Trip. Uh, to, to me, I think the, the most important thing about Gold Trip is the glue on shoes going on. Also, a big problem with this horse over 3,200. Um, well, not a, actually not a huge problem. It's probably a less of a problem, but you combine the two, a horse with with problematical feet and, and stretching to a distance, you know, deep into a preparation that's unknown. Uh, I think uh, the two of those things leads me to want to risk this horse. I think the horse is going extremely well, and it's a shame that it's obviously got problems with its feet. But, um, yeah, it's just, just hard to, to really chime into this horse. Also, 15 starts, one win. I, I definitely couldn't knock anyone throwing it at exotics, things like that, just because it is going so well and it is a classy sort of horse. Very unlucky in the Cox Plate. Uh, we'll actually show it. 
there's two horses in the Cox Plate, have come out of the Cox Plate, uh, it and uh, Young Werther, and I'll come to a point here. So this is this is a gold trip back here, and Young Werther is in the sort of not box seat, but in the prime position just behind the lead. So uh, I wouldn't even worry about Young Werther. Just have a look at uh, Gold Trip in the Australian Bloodstock colours. Sort of just gets chopped out here. She said in the, the, this race as well was it was run at a more even tempo, but not easy to pick up at this sort of level once you're held up. So held up back to the inside, squeezed up again late here and really never got his chance. So he, he's, you know, arguably should have finished a lot closer here. And and that form is obviously, you know, seen as very strong. I'm a little bit concerned about it as I think, you know, a lot of the horses were weakening there. It, it wasn't a, a bad Cox plate by any stretch, but um, to me, it, it wasn't sort of a vintage race either. So I'm, I'm letting gold, trip go through to the keeper mainly because of the glue on shoes think that you know it's like saying a, you know a car with no wheels is, is uh, very difficult to to drive a horse with no feet or a problematical feet is is a, you know a big big detractor so for me it, it's up against it due we've talked about in that the, it's lead up run in the Caulfield Cup I'm going to bracket due and Montefilia in very similar light as in I think they've been set for one race this is it the Melbourne Cup I think they've both had a lot of work poured into them throughout their preparation that maybe they wouldn't have had if they were targeting different races. They've both targeted 3,200 metres. And whilst they both haven't crossed that bridge to date, I think, you know, this is, it shows that this is the race they've targeted. Uh, Montefilia, which we're not talking about now, it was a race very flat second up because I think they'd put the extra work into it. And Jue has sort of raced in that similar fashion throughout. So, you know, just stepped to a mile, looked a bit plain there and a little bit ginger across the line. That's probably the only run you should be worried. Oh, I was worried about the whole prep, but when it went to Flemington, just thought it was outsped there. You know, they really went slow, zipped home. Rome, Smoke and Roman's got the job done. And then last start, same thing. Ridden negatively just to, you know, be conservative from a, an awkward draw and, and hit the line quite well, one pace. Wasn't as if it was weakening there. I think it was the second fastest last 200 of the race. And uh, Montefilli was the only one that was closing stronger. And just love the way she sort of travels. I think that, you know, the drier the surface, the better for her, probably very important. And that's, you know, the combination of maybe just a little bit weaker than Montefilia and, and the, you know, the, the track being potentially soft is is why she is getting out in the market. But I think $31 is no reaction. Uh, Knight's Order is a horse that I'm, I'm very keen on. Um, the problem with it probably, well, not probably, is the potential speed in the race and the draw that it has here so it's got a wide draw uh I'll see if i can get the map up so i'll put the map over here at this stage uh da, 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 da. what am i going to do i'm going to bring the map up i'm going to bring it over here so he's drawn out wide um he's not even in the race that's interesting because he's right down here so yeah leader but you've got all this speed coming across new myriad high emotion want to just sort of tuck across i think they'll just cross inside here pretty easily so it'll be the horses like smoke and romans and wider that are going to actually provide the speed in the race and i think knight's order you know will take its time to cruise across horse like serpentine's a bit of a nightmare i'm not sure what it's going to do but you know horses like young Werther, point and a pan smoke and romans as you said are all going to try and cruise forward and find a spot as well don't think it's the end of the world but i just worried that there's a little bit more tempo than i would have hoped for going to quickly show the replay of this horse and you know, if we get conditions like this, uh, you have to elevate this horse's chances. And that was a very heavy track in the Sydney Cup. Uh, just set, set all. So start from the start, interestingly, uh, got across quite easily to lead. But does set a solid tempo, like a, a very solid tempo, like the insanely solid tempo. And ran very, very fast time for the 3200, considering the conditions. Uh, you, see, you see sort of leads all. Pause the pressure into the race nice and early, which is what you expect in a Melbourne Cup. Horses that had the cold sit on it, just ran away from. Uh, the other horse that's in this race is, I can't even, so there's a Decane Sweet Junior. I probably should, let me just listen to the name. The only two chances, but Knight's Order, brave in the lead. Rachel King rides him right out, Knight's Order, holding Shiraz. Dash and Sweet Junior goes to... Dash and Sweet Junior. So it's the other horse that I'm actually quite interested in this race. It was a little bit difficult to run on that day and it had, was coming off a, a, an Adelaide Cup win and um, and then came to this race and sort of ran on wide. The only horse to really make ground. Stockman out wide here was just never really in the race. 
it's in the race here. But I, I just, you just love the win of this horse. Love that it can absorb pressure. Love that it can kick off fast tempos. It's, it's one off, you know, crazy fast tempos before. And if it, ha- you know, if it happens to, uh, you know, control it at all, I think this horse is right in the race. And there's a sense of any rain is, is a positive for this horse. Really do think he's, you know, a, a big player at twenty-three dollars. Just a r- hard fit, seasoned horse. Maybe not the class horse that um, you would have found in previous years to to win a Melbourne Cup, but I, I don't think this is a vintage Melbourne Cup from a class perspective. So I do think that that Knight's Order can run really well here. All his runs back, you know, he's been beat. He won the first up on a heavy track, got beat a length, got beat a length and a half in the Flemington uh, lead up where it just went way too slow. Then last start maybe just a touch too slow again over the twenty four. Stretching out to the 32, he's, you know, he was beaten in this race last year, but it sort of all went very pear-shaped. Um, he's, his other three runs at 3,200, his other two runs at 3,200 have been dominant wins. So for me, uh, he, he's just an auto uh, include around the $23 mark. I won't spend this much time on all these horses, let me tell you. Montefilio, we've really talked about enough, I think. Uh, chase the fast speed at... Um, Ranwick two starts back behind Cascadian off a very very fast tempo, and looked to be sort of struggling there on the bend, and then and then really found uh, her legs again late, and, and then you know we all saw the, the Caulfield Cup lead up. Bit of a shame we missed the price there. I think it's only eleven dollars, but I do think it's entitled to be favourite uh, of the locals. And if you are dubious about the internationals, then I think she should be favourite overall. So. I don't have that much between them, between uh, Montefilia, Jua and, and, and Knight's Order as well in, in my market. But I do believe, you know, around the $11 mark is, is certainly realistic. I just would have hoped to get better. And hopefully we do get a little bit better uh, come come race day. New Miriam, we've talked about, uh, it's a horse that I believe uh, just has to run the distance. That's its biggest issue. I do think it gets an absolute dream run just in behind the speed. It's one of the few to, to find the fence uh, easily. And, and should get a very conservative run. The horse is absolutely flying. Its form ties in with Montefilia. It was beat, it beat Montefilia two starts ago um, off that brutal tempo, and it had a much harder run there. And it's just a matter of whether this horse runs the distance. At $71, I'm absolutely not knocking it. I could tell you to, I could include it in some multis, um, you know, sort of as in um, exotics. I, I don't think it can win, but I can include it, you know, for third and fourth, just in case in some some wider multis for sure, just because it's just a silly price at, at $81. Um, next horse down, without a fight. So this is the first of the internationals. Uh, how good is my organisation? Not that good. So without a fight, I'll, I'll talk about it first, is, is a horse that's not had too many starts um, in its career. Probably should know how many, shouldn't I? Semi well organized. 17 starts, seven wins, uh, three three seconds and four thirds. Do have that written down. The interesting part about this horse is that its wins, you know, three uh, are in very small fields. So three three horse field, six horse field, four horse field, four horse field, five horse field, and you've got to go right back to its maiden. To uh, well, it's novice they call it in in. The UK, it, it won two novices with 10, 10 horse fields and the rest of them are three, six, four, four, five. So for me, that's a big worrying point. I do believe this horse is 100% being set for this race. And, I, and I'll and i show you the sort of lead up to this uh, where it uh, is only a six horse field. Improving wider out in the red cap is Global Storm as they met. So it's in behind here in the yellow. I've got no doubt that they've looked after this horse here. It carried 62 and a half kilos. They've just decided to just give it a uh, not barrier trial. It's a bad way to say it, but they didn't they didn't want to risk uh, getting re-handicapped or they knew they had enough to get into the race. There's no doubt, and and this horse was just allowed to find the line in restricted room late. I thought they looked after it quite well, and I love the pipe opener. I take this horse extremely seriously. Uh, I don't think there should be as much between it and Dover Legend, um, in my opinion, and. On the outside. Also oh, thought, you know, this is its other key lead up run. Kamari trying to make it just about every yard a winning one here. He leads narrowly, being challenged now by without a fight on the outside. So they without a fight coming after the leader here. Third place on the outside, Mandu. 
really stretches the neck and and this is again only a six horse field but 2800 meters is close enough for 3200 for me the way they race over there you know that that is normally how it transpires but really not you know racing away from them not dynamic turn of foot just a bit of a builder where does it get from gate 18 not sure am i taking it seriously absolutely as i sort of mentioned but uh, not really sure what to do with it so my reservations are the rider where it gets to in the run i'm not sure and you know all these small fields it's just such a big dynamic difference between three six four four five at once it's got to any sort of class level to 24 runners around a foreign track after traveling so uh, yeah, I, 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 I do, I do, I'll tell you how I'm going to play it later, but I do take this horse seriously. I do believe it's one of the two yeah, overseas chances, but, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're my reservations. Kimura we'll touch on quickly as well. So Kimura is, there's only one lead up, I think, of any importance. And this is, this is where it wins. Master of reality. over two furlongs to go and gear up is doing just that has opened up a bit of a lead over wordsworth Kamara stays on on the outside so big strong horse down the outside here this is a you know a group three i believe over 2816 meters at the curra so it's a group it's a group two the curra cup so it's not a bad race and this forms you know pretty solid for a race of this nature came out and got beat 20 links in the iris and led to group one and it's following start looks a bit of a battler for me Am I going to knock it at 50 to 1? Absolutely not. Am I going to include it in, you know, third and fourth in trifectas? I'm going to because this race is, you know, potentially so average on paper this year that uh, you, you're kind of leaving these horses out at your own peril, I believe, especially from, you know, placing perspectives because they just might be stronger than our horses because that, that, that horse certainly looks like he'll keep coming. Uh, is he a classy horse? Not at all. Um, but... You know, that might be enough to, to, to run into the placings this year, potentially. Doville Legend, the horse that everyone wants to find. $3.80 favourite now. Crazy for me. Uh, he's, he's his running the, uh, the Great Voltaire, is it? He comes to the outside here in the, uh, the Legend colours, which we know here in Australia. Classic Legend. A lot of Legend horses have carried... The colours in Australia. He's a horse that does a few things wrong. So you want to see him get around and duck and weave and do all sorts of things, but he certainly is a line chaser. He's only won to 2,600, I believe, so far. Seven starts only in his career. He was a maiden up until, you know, this preparation, and he has been in work for a long time. But he is a nice specimen of a horse. There is no doubt about that. Apparently, he put on weight while he was travelling, which is just unheard of. He threw the line there pretty good. Certainly a better turn of foot to my eye than than the uh, without a fight. So that's a big positive for this horse. And, yeah, he just sort of glides along. He's just a natural-looking staying type. There's no doubt. The other race that's of importance here uh, that I wanted to show is this. I just wanted to show what this horse does in a big field. So it had a very nice run here, which is important to a horse's chances, no doubt. Sits in behind here, as you can see. And... Fast forward to the action. Absolutely perfect run, but at least it's shown that it, it can do this in a big field, which I think is very important. Pushes out again. Another thing that's important uh, when you're talking about coming to Australia to race. So the horse has got race craft. It's, it's tough and just, just narrowly just doesn't run the leader down here. But this was sort of how many runs back? This was four runs back over 2,400 metres and... Sorry, yeah, it was four runs back over 2,400 metres. And he was building through the line, certainly not stopping there. Got no real issue with him getting to the 3,200 metres. Draws absolutely ideally. McAvoy to ride is certainly a decent recipe when it comes to this sort of distance range. He do, I don't like to find Karen too much, but I do believe that uh, this is his forte in life. And uh, he, he's well suited in this race. Uh, Mike. Queries with the horse, blindfold on. Uh, not many, too many people. If you the blindfold, something they put on when you get to the barriers, it helps you get in the gate. So the horse has obviously got some quirks. He's been barred before for I think not wanting to go on the track or not loading. Uh, it was a while ago. He has been gelded since. So uh, understandable that he's favourite here. But you know this horse had seven starts, three wins in his lifetime. Uh, as I was sort of saying, he's been up 
this preparation since well, January, February, March. Uh, at the uh, at the latest was when he's come into work. He's then raced all the way through. He only won a maiden over two thousand meters in April. Uh, he's then sort of gone to Group Three, Group Three, Group Two was was his last win in that small field, and now he comes here and he tackles the Melbourne Cup. I know the form around him stands up really well, but I'm just concerned, you know, that he's only lightly raced. He's had to travel. As they said, they've, he's, apparently he's handled all this really well, uh, travel and everything to to the to everyone's, you know, um, opinion of, of how he's, he's handled everything so far. I love that they've put the, the local jockey on, to be honest. I, don't, I can't knock his form. I can just knock that he's not a seasoned horse. He's 76 days between runs. He's not tackled this distance before, and he's got a bit of gear on him, uh, like, as I said, blindfold and things that scare me a little bit. So I think he's the horse to beat. I've got no doubt that. Could I take $3.80, $3.60, not in a million years? Um, As I said, I think think the best way to play him is to stand him out in a trifecta or something like that as a a saving sort of option. And you still kind of get value out of that, usually in Melbourne Cups, if you if you get it right, the placings, first fours, things like that. So uh, for me, I think it's well too short to be taking as a, as a win bet and to be getting excited about. But I do think he is certainly a winning chance and, you know, quite potentially the, the horse to beat. It's just um, it's just a big ask for a horse that's so lightly raced to, to do what he's got to do. So, uh, you know, it's not always about ability in these races. Sometimes it's circumstances as well. And, and we saw that with light infantry on Saturday. But sometimes, you know, heading over here and, and, um, and just having to, to race the way we do is, is enough to, to bring a horse undone. So next is Stockman, absolutely flying this horse. We'll have a look uh, very quickly at his, I think we'll watch his last three because we can cover other horses at the same time. Sorry that I'm not getting through this quicker. So this is the Metropolitan. I thought the ride was pretty average here, sort of stayed in, ended up getting into a bad spot. And as we watch this, there's Realm of Flowers out wide here. We've got Durston who came out and won the uh, Caulfield Cup. This is Stockman in the middle. And you've got a Rapaho that's out the back there. I think they're the only ones in this race that are significant. Uh, significant because Durston's come out and proven this form pretty solid. Arapaho's come out and run. And uh, Stockman's run twice since, but it's just... This realm of Flowers, we'll just watch it because it hasn't had a run since this horse, but super tough effort from Realm of Flowers in particular here. Blinkers go on on Saturday, but we'll get to we'll get to Realm of Flowers soon enough, no doubt. Strong through the line, didn't and Stockman wasn't too bad either, all things considered in that run alone. Arapaho was okay. Uh, this is next start. They went really quick here. So they went really slow in that Metropolitan. Uh, really quick here. Got back off them, got to the right part of the track. This is Stockman down the outside. And Arapaho again, just failing to run this horse down. They both had every possible chance ridden back in the field here. And I thought um, Stockman was quite superior over Arapaho this day. So Arapaho's in this race. And I struggle to find it turning the tables up in distance, even though it does try hard here. Just love that Joe Pride's had the confidence in this horse to then send it back to the races again so this horse handles wet dry wet's a bonus for it and this is saturday just gone taken back from the start this race was run pretty quickly but yeah you know, i'm just gonna say that i don't think it was there to, to to worry about running too much i think they just sort of sent him around got him to the outside here and let him find the line they're not slowing they're slowing down the race but they're not going slow and he's built nicely through the line. Just think he's at an absolutely flawless preparation. He was in the right part of the track there. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's nothing too exciting about that run in isolation. But if you treat it as, uh, well, the words glorified barrier trial come to mind, uh, yeah, you, you, you wouldn't expect it to go an inch better. So it's it's gone very well. Stockman draws absolutely ideally to get a really soft run, sort of midfield to second half of the field. Got no problem with that. Doesn't matter how the, the track's racing. This horse should... Should run quite positively. I think he's, you know, well, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think he can win, and I'm not taking him super seriously from a winning perspective. But I definitely think he's, you know, if not an each way option, a, a horse that must go in all multiples. Uh, Stockman. 
Bow and Declare, we touched on, uh, won this race, obviously, I think, where was it? Cheapest Creepers, 2019, off a seriously slow tempo with a perfect ride. I think it needs to get, you know, all those favours and a few more to win this race. It's a horse that I'm happy to leave out, even though I do see it getting an absolutely perfect run. And I do believe the horse is flying. Another horse that, you know, may you could throw into third, fourth, um, you know, in a wide trifecta if you, if you don't want to miss out. But um, I think it's a horse to take on. Young Werther, similarly, I think it's an interesting horse, but 1,700, 2,000, 2,040, straight to 3,200 for a horse that hasn't been beyond 2,400 is enough for me to say, uh, you know, not today, Josephine, for um, Young Werther. I'll try and boot through these horses that I'm, you know, not happy with. Who Your Mal is an interesting horse. Um, sorry, I'll try and... Your mouth. So we're going to find Dover Legend. We're going to second in this field here. Uh, so who your mouth in this race as well? Cuts back to the inside. So this is who your mouth in the yellow colours. Dover Legend in the white with the red V. Uh, the absolute legend colours. So who your mouth sprints quite sharply here. Back to the inside. Doville gets completely lost in a little bit punch trunk down the outside. And for most of the race, who your mouth's got the, got the upper hand and just weakens late, Doville Legend gets it, runs around quite a bit. So it's hard to see that the Doville Legend not turning the tables. And I think the other thing you need to take advantage of is that when you're on a horse travelling, it's like a, it's like a, for me, I, I try and treat it as, um, you know, a tennis player in a in a Grand Slam, two weeks deep into a in a Grand Slam, you need to be a beast. You need to be, you know, a hard fit, seasoned professional to to get through that just that two weeks of competition. And, and I treat the Melbourne Cup the same. So if you look at who your mouth is physically, uh, the two horses around it here, and, and see how small and, and underdeveloped it is in comparison, I think that's going to play against who your mouth. Uh, it came out after that run. And like in that that run in isolation is good enough here. Um, if you if you decide that it can run the, the distance and it has won over twenty eight hundred meters, it's just a matter of whether you believe the last run, which was quite poor. And and we'll have to have to look at it. Why have I not got this um, this run? Why have I not got this horse up? I am sorry. Great website, racing and sports. Um, for any international queries. And the beauty of this is, as you can see, you can bring up their replays pretty easily. So, uh, yeah, it's just this horse sort of travelled into the race. And it's out the back last there um, quite well. You can see it. They're travelling, travelling, falls to the outside, looks to let down and does let down and then really struggles and looks a bit proppy late. And I just hate to see that leading up to a Melbourne Cup just think that this sort of test really, you know, brings undone any horse with any sort of issues. I don't like a, a horse that doesn't normally hang hanging. I think that's a bad sign. And just what this horse does up the straight sort of runs around and, and it's tired late. I think all those things are, are poor signs for, for a horse like this to try and overcome in 51 days with a plane flight and everything that comes with it and, and adding in that the horse is there. You can see he's like really weak late. So obviously a, a small issue there of some sort but not ideal and not something you want to have to try and overcome leading into a race like this. So I'm against who you mouth. think it's, you know, just got everything against it from a physical perspective here that you can possibly have. And that's just too much for me to, to, to overcome, to win a Melbourne cup. So who you mouth is a, a no for me. Uh, if it comes out and runs like a jet or egg on my face, but you can't be with them all. Uh, Serpentine, uh, it, it ran second the other day to, uh, Surefire, who is a horse that I absolutely love, but I think Surefire is completely cooked from the Sydney uh, spring, from the wet tracks, and Surefire sort of got past this horse. It's in front, did set a pretty solid tempo, did a pretty good job considering it was beaten 20-something, 16 and a half, 16 and three-quarter lengths its previous start. So they got to it pretty early and it fought back, as you can see. But I'm worried about this form. I just think that uh, it's not strong enough for a Melbourne Cup. Uh, 
Lloyd's got plenty of tricks. There's no doubt about that. Lloyd Williams, he, if anyone's going to pull it off, he probably can. But I do think this horse is a, is a genuine roughy in the race that um, will have to turn its form right around to, to be in the finish. We've talked about this horse, Dakin Sweet Jr. Um, we'll quickly look at its last run because it was it did run 10th. Um, but I think the, the, the race was pretty leisurely run. And and this race is the Bart Cummings that Luna Flair win. So we can have a look at Luna Flair as well. Uh, I, I, th- I prefer to be with this horse. I think the six sprint suited Luna Flair better than it suited. So it's the horse on the outside here in the white, I believe, white cap. So they go pretty slow. The horse just can't sprint with them. Sort of gets creeped up and boxed up too. So it's in the middle here, whereas Luna Flair is back on the inside. This is the Francesco Gardi form line. There's Val and Declare back there. And you can see this doesn't really get going and get clear of air. And so it gets chopped off. I just didn't hate it through the line. So you can even, like, I don't think the horse is tired. It just doesn't really get a chance to wind up. And I just think the race was run completely against what you want to see for this horse. It, it, slow tempo second up as well. 17, 2,000, 25, 3,200, uh, stronger run race. I believe this horse can improve. It wasn't even, I didn't have it on the stream. That's a good effort. Sorry. So, yeah, this is the horse here <laughs> in the yellow cap. It just says so it's inside the yellow cap in the white, just squeezed up. Bound declares coming through the middle there, gets past it. And this is Luna Flair that had the nice sitting behind them and showed a decent turn of foot. It's a bit of a weird one when I'm, when I'm, going to say that I'm against Luna Flair, which we haven't got to a little bit, and I'm against Fow and Declare. I just think these sit sprints over 2,400 suit those horses better, and I just think this guy's going to shine out in a fast run 3,200, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm uh, in favour of, uh, what is it, Dakin's, Dakin, Dakin Sweet Junior. I don't, I don't know how to say this horse's name. Uh, Grand Promenade's another horse that uh, I believe has, has been a victim of, of circumstances. So a slow run race two ago where it got back and, and had no luck, and then last start up on a brutal tempo where they went a million miles an hour. I got beat 12 lengths, but I'm saying that form's you know not diabolical for this. Uh, has run in this race previously and ran six, beaten 13, but did have a really tough run on a fast tempo there. So I think this is a horse again for for third and fourth in exotics, Grand Promenade. Don't think it can probably win, but um, yeah, it's it's one for the exotics. I think a wrapper hose up against it. I think it's going to end up back near last from the the draw here and. Uh, it's the next horse down in the in the in the in the rail in the running, and I uh, just see it being up against it from that draw. It's had a long hard prep. It's got to run the thirty two hundred, which I think is a query as well, and happy to take a wrapper horn at this point. I uh, hope I'm wrong for Bjorn's sake, good fella. Uh, Emissary came out, won the Geelong Cup last start. Really good ride there. Slow tempo. Thought it was you know very well ridden. Showed that this horse needs to be ridden off the speed. That was definitely its best run this prep. Clearly. Will it run 3,200? Absolutely no clue. Uh, has it got the class? I don't think so. I, it's another horse that I think beat uh, Surefire when he's just not at his best. I think Surefire would handle that horse at his best. Uh, I'm not knocking that run at all, um, but I just think it's uh, the class of that race is the issue and getting to 3,200 is the, the, the deciding oh, factor for me. Luna Flair, as we talked about, not, not a bad setup, this horse. Good solid win there where it was just sitting off the slow tempo. Ran into second behind Francesco Gatti last start off a brutal tempo again. So well set up from a fitness perspective. Handles all ground, obviously dry the better, I think, for this horse. But uh, draws quite well. Uh, informed jockey and Michael D. He'd be full of confidence at the moment. Just the, the class of this horse is the issue for mine. Uh, it's another horse that I could po- probably put in for placings. But, um, yeah, I'd be very surprised if it won. So third and fourth only for me. For Luna Flair, Smoke and Rones is a horse that you have to put in, have to include. It's it's run well off, you know, extremely fast tempos up to 2,500 metres. The 3,200 is certainly a query, but I do think, you know, a horse that can absorb really fast speeds and, and sit on speed and, and win off them is entitled to, to have, you know, you, you've got to have it on your side, I, I believe, rising in distance. So, uh Considering it's got a, a decent draw here to sort of carve across and end up to fifth, sixth, seventh, something like that in the run, uh, I, I think it can certainly improve. Thought it was just given an, a, a, an average ride last start. And this horse does handle all conditions. 
Again, another one, probably the drier, the better for it. But um, yeah, a serious horse that seems to be forgotten by the market very quickly, considering it started favourite in the Caulfield Cup. Charlie Rose is a no for me, just not going well enough and doesn't have the class. Port Nepean is a no, just not going well enough and does have the, the previous form that stacks up into a race like this potentially, but just hasn't shown enough at all in the two runs back that we've seen. So, uh, yeah, I just try to get through these horses down the bottom. High emotion, the same for me. Thought that Bendigo Cup win was okay, but, um, yeah, I don't think it's deep enough to uh, give it a chance in this race, rising to 3,200 metres. Not sure that's a, an absolute positive either. Thought it was pretty flat on, flat on the line there the other day. Interpretation is a horse I'm going to entertain. It comes out again. I'm sort of contradicting the, the Geelong Cup form race. But again, it's a, it's a horse that's run into a, a slow tempo there. And I don't think it's suited at all. So to me, this is all about rising. So it's here in a nice spot for fifth defence. Blink is going on Saturday, which I think is very important. Just held up a little bit there. That's not, I think it's inconsequential to the result of it. Here, sort of forced back towards the inside, which wasn't the place to be. So it's coming back towards the fence now and sort of whacks away. This horse started $6.50 in this race. I think Emissary was double figures. So it was it was fancy to beat it. And I just think that the tempo of the race, it's not stopping, um, which is important. And I just feel that this horse really is a horse that needs 3,200. This is its last run. Similar sort of, he gets out and he just keeps grinding. Um, yeah, you've got to trust this stable that they're putting the blinkers on it. I'm not sure whether it's a last ditch effort or not, but I'm going to say it's not. I'm going to say it's a plan. I'm going to say up to 3,200 metres, this horse can really improve. And the reason why I'm happy to say it is because it's like 60 to 1. And I only have to be right once in 60 times. So it's one that goes in all multiples for me, all exotics. It's it's one of the two horses, Itten, Dak and Sweet um, Junior. Uh, one of the two horses I think is the best value in the race currently. Realm of Flowers, we did watch the run there. It's a horse that I, I'd give a serious chance to. It's a winner over 2,800 2, in fast time at Flemington. It does look like it's it's going to lap up 3,200 metres. It's only had one try previously, I believe, or it's had two tries, sorry. And ran second at Sandown, sorry, and uh, ran in the uh, Sydney, ran fifth in the Sydney Cup behind Salino in uh, 2021. So, and it had no luck there. I will show you the replay of it, to be honest, because I do believe it's important. It certainly does look like it's going to run the trip. Betting on this horse is what's putting me off it. So it's back on the inside here in the yellow with the black. As we saw, it was, had no luck at all in the Metrop in Sydney. So here it is sort of carving back towards the inside again here. So this staying race is momentum so important. And this horse just gets no chance to build any at any stage. Ends up trying to follow these horses through. As you can see, the rider hasn't had a chance to even get to it at this stage. Finally can get to work on the horse. And all these horses have had, you know, full head of steam up, picking up towards the inside. No issue at all for me, 3,200 metres. And and a horse that's, uh, you know, a contender. I just can't believe it's only $10. Uh, sorry, $11 now. So the market's found it, which is annoying. Uh, but I do think it's a good player. It is a player. All right. I think the four chances, um, the, I think the four main chances are all coming out of the Caulfield Cup for me. I'm going to, as I said, I'm, I'm going to leave the uh, the internationals out uh, of my betting strategy because I don't think they're worth throwing in a an exotic strategy, but win betting only. I do think that Smoke and Romans, $19, Dewey, $31, Knight's Order, $23, not in that order. I think uh, all three of them are worth playing. And I do believe Montefilia is the horse to beat. It's the one, it's around $11. So it and Realm of Flowers to me are, are very similar. I, I can't have Realm of Flowers shorter than Montefilia just because I don't think it's coming through the right form lines, but it's sort of not far away as well for me, Realm of Flowers. But I, do, I think those top four I'm very happy with in Knights Order, Dewey, Smoke and Romans, Montefilia. I don't want to lose if any of those win, and I want to win if, if Knights Order, Dewey or Smoke and Romans wins the race. When it comes to uh, value for exotics, I think you've got to throw Realm of Flowers in. As I said, I don't think it's great value at the $11. Can't back it to win, but throwing it in. I think Stockman has to be put in anything, everything. And the two roughies that I believe have to go in, in if everything, their interpretation, and especially Dakin Sweet Jr. 
Uh, you can you can say that however you like. I did listen to it and I still can't get it right. So I think that's the play for me is making Knights Order Duet and Smoke and Romans winners, like good winners. Uh, I don't want to lose on the race if Pontophilia wins. As I said, I'll, I'm going to put all this in a, a little document or something. I think that the play is with Doville Legend, without a fight, I think he's got a good chance as well. I'm just worried about that. all those little issues, small field where it's going to be, international jockey coming out to ride the horse. I, I'm, I would play a trifecta with them to win and then fill it with the other horses around just in case uh, if they run 1-2 one, or 1-3 one, or 1-4. One, uh, too good. I'm, I'm just happy to sort of take the internationals on this year, to be honest, and uh, and go with the locals. And I think the Caulfield Cup's the right form line. So cheering home, Knight's Order, number one, um, Smoke and Romans, Jouet, and if they get knocked off, I hope it's by Montefilia. Good luck, guys. It's certainly not an easy year. Not too many international raiders, but just the form itself was hard to line up this year. So I uh, hope that's been of help. And, you know, you may not agree with me. That's no problem. But hopefully you may have picked up something along the way that you may have missed. And, and that's what this game's all about. Good luck on, on Tuesday. And I'll, I'll do a really quick revised episode, too, just for those people who are not really interested in you know, the hoo-ha about going through all the races in individually and just, just want a quick wrap-up, which is, I think, what most people want. Thanks, guys.